Hi, uh, my name is Jason Sisk. I've never, I've been to a few of these, but I've never talked before. Um, so, uh, let's see if you can read this. Yeah, pretty much, except for that. Um, so, <clears throat> I talked with um, Miles, what, probably three months ago, and I had this big idea uh, that uh, I work for uh, Moby Wireless here, in, uh, or up in Sciencesville, and uh, we were about to do a uh, solar conversion, so I was thinking, I want to talk about these sometimes. So uh, we had been using Sphinx and we we're about to move to solar and I was thinking, oh, you know, what a great opportunity to, you know, benchmark a couple of search engines and give some people some really good deep information. So um, <clears throat> I wanted to tell you that the, the end result is this is not very scientific uh, at all. Uh, there are a number of reasons for this, so I just wanted to give you a stupid little tag cloud of those reasons. Um, <laughs> The number one, of course, being procrastination, but um, <clears throat> there are another uh, few of them. Uh, eventually, I just kind of threw my hands up and said, at some point, you know, I got to get this done, or I'm going to allow Miles to punch me in the neck. Uh, <clears throat> so he was actually one of the factors that I said, you know, I need to shit or get off the pot about this. So <laughs> I don't think I ever said that for the record. No, no, I did. <laughs> so um, I just did decide to retitle the talk. Um, in an homage to Kurt Vonnegut, it was a uh, decidedly non-scientific agenda biased casual overview of applied search mechanisms in a medium-sized Rails app. So for what it's worth, um, these are the two contenders. Has anybody in here used uh, Sphinx or Solar in your app? I'm seeing nods and raises. Okay, well, then I can avoid the blatant lies. I suppose some of this is going to have to be true. Um, so they're both um, full text search engines. Uh, Sphinx is written in C++. Um, it has a GPL v2 license, uh, if that's relevant for uh, what, your, what your app actually is commercially or whether you build onto it. Um, some of the prominent sites that use Sphinx are Craigslist, Pirate Bay, Tumblr, and Dailymotion, though if you actually look at that URL, uh, the rest of them are, are dubious at best, uh, non-popular non sites. Uh, so. Um, the um, uh, solar is uh, run. Uh, it's written by Apa uh, it's under the Apache project. Uh, it runs on Lucene, which is written in Java. Uh, it has Apache 2 license naturally. Uh, the list is much more uh, banner worthy. Uh, this is actually just a very short list of uh, sites that are running solar. So, you know, take it for what it's worth. If you're if you're into popular people and popular technologies, solar is probably the, the more popular we go with. Um, so I built a couple of different slides. Um, one I wanted to call alleged pros and cons between the two of these, meaning, you know, if you just read community and you read what people say about about these items without actually trying them out, this is what you'll hear. Typically, uh, Sphinx being uh, pros that it does fast indexing, uh, it talks directly to the database. Um, that uh, out of the box, um, you can do pretty easy relevance ranking with the search results. Uh, cons being that, um, they, that it does not do per record indexing very well. Um, so you have, to, you have to generate delta indexes, which serve as a sort of intermediary between the next time you do a full index, um, and that it's pretty difficult to extend. So soundex uh, extensions and whatnot are a little bit harder to, to hack into Sphinx. Uh, than your, your typical engine. So um, solar by comparison, uh, there's one thing that, that obviously uh, we, we went to solar um, mostly because par in part because there's a large community there. Um, there's a lot of support for it. Um, it indexes PDF and docs. Um, we're beginning to have uh, the need for, we deal with enterprise clients, so we have people uploading Word docs and PDFs to the app occasionally. So. Uh, we wanted to have the ability to search those kinds of things. Uh, cons being that, you know, when you do a full index with Solar, it, it's by comparison to Sphinx, it is rather slow. Um, and I, I, there's a lot of people that will complain about poor docs or, or bad docs. I would just say that they have poor coverage. Um, for the docs that they have in Solar, uh, if you have to solve a problem, um, you know, a common problem, you'll find docs for it. But if it's an uncommon problem, you're going to have to dig for quite a bit. So. Um, you know, it's kind of the, the trade-off of there being a lot of power behind it um, versus not a lot of people contributing the documentation. So, um, <clears throat> this, the experience pros and cons, what we actually found uh, actually running both Sphinx and Solar 
uh, we found that Sphinx was pretty easy to set up uh, for a Rails app. Uh, it had a fairly low memory footprint. We actually ran Sphinx on the same uh, production <coughs> server as our live app uh, with really no, no issue whatsoever. Uh, I'll show you in a minute how small our app is, so that's probably it's consequential. Um, the cons, the, uh, the, the, the indexing issue was a real big problem for us, and this was actually the main reason we decided to move away from Sphinx. Um, I'll explain that a little bit. Uh, that is the, when you have to uh, make the delta indexes, uh, who here has used Sphinx, actually, as opposed to just Solar? Um, did, you, did you have to re-index on deploy every time? Okay, so yeah, this was this was just an abysmal problem for us because we deploy so much. Um, so every time you would deploy with Sphinx, you would have to re-index because in the case that you actually change your data definition where you want to re-index different uh, attributes of the models, um, you would have to re you would have to re-index every time you deploy. Well, we would deploy sometimes three, four times a day. So every time you would deploy Sphinx, the search engine would go down and you would have exception errors from people trying to uh, run a search. Why, so. why do you have to re-index? Um, Every time you change your schema? Yeah, if you change the, if you change the search schema, if you change uh, what you want your models to be searched by, you would have to re-index because uh, Sphinx doesn't do uh, per record indexing. Um, so you, the delta indexing basically works like a cache. It's an index cache, and then uh, as you make record changes live, it will index your changes the delta index, and then when you go to actually, you, you, you need to do a full re-index to index the whole thing. So, um, I, and I will give one caveat. I'm actually the development team manager, um, so I was not <coughs> the one predominantly doing all of the conversion work on this. So, a lot of this is anecdotal. So, if I sound like I'm full of shit, I'm about three quarters full of shit. <laughs> <laughs> um, <coughs> so, on, on the index, and you don't have, you only have to index if you actually change your scheme. So that's, yeah. that's not something you have to do. Well, and this is where, um, it, it's funny you, you mentioned that. In retrospect, uh, when I was putting the slides together, I was thinking we could have, we have to, we have to solve this problem with solar, um, which is, you know, if you, make a, if you make a data model change where you want to index something, how do you, you know, how do you re-index that model? And we're finding, well, we're just doing it in migrations. Right. So in retrospect, we probably could have been doing that with Sphinx and saved ourselves a lot of headache. Um, we are, yeah. Have you have you noticed a big change in between the time it takes for a full reindex with Sphinx versus Solar? Um, no, because we don't do a full reindex much often anymore. Um, we used to do a full reindex at 2 a.m. daily, and now we don't do a full reindex until just occasionally we'll do a full reindex, but it's not scheduled. So um, I'll show you here in a minute the, the deploy time changes between the two. Um, because we were doing the full re-index on deploy, uh, it was pretty remarkable to speed up and deploy. Um, and the uh, the other con, the other major con to Sphinx that we found was just, you know, we were trying to, uh, we've been trying to do a Rails 3 conversion for a while, but, uh, you know, other priorities being what they are, uh, the Rails 2 gem uh, you know, has been pretty much abandoned by the developer. They're like, yeah, we're, we're not going to support uh, Rails 2 development for thinking Sphinx anymore, so... Uh, Thinking Sphinx version 2 had a lot of uh, changes to it that we had hoped to implement, but uh, they weren't going to uh, make it back compatible for Rails 2. So we just said, you know, we don't know how much longer we're going to be on Rails 2. It could be a while. Um, that being said, we're going to go ahead and make a move. So uh, Solar, so far, um, I'll kind of read backwards here. Uh, we just really launched our Solar conversion in the last, let's say, three weeks. Um, that's the other thing that's been delaying me is we actually didn't do the conversion. Um, but uh, the pro side, it's a, uh, it's got it's it's got a lot that it can do. Um, uh, the configs all in XML. Um, it's pretty complex. It's kind of daunting <coughs> if you dig into it. But you know, once you know what you're looking for, it's pretty easy to set up. Um, it will allow you to do single model indexing. So from the console, you could just say person dot reindex, and it will reindex all of that singular model. Um, we found that was a little bit harder to do in Sphinx than just a, a really simple console command. Uh, and this is through the, the gem. Uh, the cons being, again, that it's complex. And, uh, you know, if you ask me in a couple of months, I might actually have some more for you. Right? I had a hard time coming up with them. So I um, wanted to amaze you with some dubious assumptions. 
this being the non-scientific, scientific part of the talk. Um, so this was so I could work on the slides at work. I um, wanted to uh, just kind of give you an overview of the app that we were working on. Uh, it's a Rails 2.3 app. Uh, we've got a little more than 22,000 lines of code in the app only. That's not the test suite. Uh, and we do typically daily deploy. Sometimes it's every couple of days, sometimes it's every three days, but mostly it's once a day, sometimes multiple times a day for patches. Um, <clears throat> we have at present five models that are search indexed, um, and all of those total is 170,000 objects. So, uh, you know, we're, we're pretty small, we're just pretty much starting out, so this, all this taken into consideration, um, the numbers you're going to see have to are, are reflected on these numbers. So this is where we were. Um, we were using Sphinx. We were using Thinking Sphinx Gem version one, and uh, we were doing delta indexing via delay jobs. So anytime you would change a model that needed to be re-indexed, you would have to send that index request off to delay job, and your delay job, uh, you know, delay job would have to. Uh, control that. So if you had a bunch of jobs going berserk and, and pounding the, the job runner, you know, your indexing would slow down. Um, you know, by, by trade-off, if you had a lot of models that need to re-index, your other jobs would back up. So, you know, your, your indexing is the strongest delayed job there. We actually, we weren't really happy with that. I mean, we didn't have any problems with it. It worked. But it's kind of a bitch when you go into that table and it's just like, you know, re-index, re-index, re-index. It's, it's hard to to pick out the, uh, the the important stuff from the not important stuff. So, uh, as I've said a few times, we uh, were doing full re-index on each deploy, and then we did it once at 2 a.m. just for safety measure. Um, we ended up going to solar. Uh, we're using whoa, oops. We uh, we're using the Sunspot Rails Gym um, version one two, which is the most recent version. Um, this is actually kind of important. We're using a Jetty uh, server on a separate DB node. So one of the things in our conversion that we did was we actually took our production search server and moved it to the database server. So it's running on a separate node from our production app. Um, the benchmarking I all did on, on a sandbox uh, machine. So that's kind of irrelevant. But what's important here is that if you read the Sunspot <coughs> documentation, it will tell you that you can, uh, it has its own built-in HTTP server, which will work in development. Um, it's recommended that you don't do that in production. So we actually set up a separate production uh, uh, server that's Jetty that's running on Java. Um, so, and profit. So <laughs> that's actually true. Um, I just wanted to uh, throw that in there because I didn't know what to put further. But. <laughs> so um, here's some minor scientific information, uh, again, crappily scientific, but somewhat. So this is a non-production data set. Um, these are benchmark times for a deploy. This is deploying the exact same code base uh, with the only difference being that one deploy script is indexing Sphinx and one is, index is not indexing Solar. So with the Sphinx, full index on this data set is 276 second deploy with solar is 147 second deploy. Um, that's pretty remarkable if you're doing patch deploys through the day, you know, an extra minute and a half or whatever. Yeah? Um, just a suggestion on Sphinx, we had the same issue, and one of the solutions we found was actually using the migration hooks. So we only do an uh, actual rebuild on the index because if there's any data migration, it goes through. That's what, I heard you saying that a minute ago, and that's kind of what I was mm -hmm. wondering about. Because that saved a ton of time. We don't really change our models that much. Yeah. That's, I wish we had learned that before we <laughs> did the heavy lifting to do the solar conversion. But, yeah, I, like I said, I was putting these slides together. And I was like, you know, there's got to be some other ways that we could have done that. But, yeah, we just know. did that a month ago after finally being sick of it. So. Was it, it, it it's, pretty, it's pretty much a pain in the butt, though, to, to keep doing that. We're up 10 them. minutes on the deploy. 10 minutes. Yeah, there are 50 million indexes. Yeah, we uh, we were kind of worried about what would happen when we got to that level of records, so that's why we bit the bullet and did the other did the conversion. But yeah, I mean that's a pretty it's pretty remarkable for a pretty smallish data set. And mind you, this is a this is a sandbox set. This is not 170,000 records. This is probably 50,000 records. Um, so I, I mistakenly didn't count. Then I left on vacation and the data set changed. So 
Um, and uh, this was a, a little bit of a controlled search. Uh, there's the, the statement there. So ran through a thousand integers and just did a did a search on the, the line model for a couple of variables. Again, not the best benchmarking query. Um, the Sphinx query for this particular one was 157 seconds. The solar was seven seconds. Um, so again, please do not read into that anything. I'm not making any kind of declaration there, but when I did that, I was like, no way. That can't, that can't have possibly gone that much faster, but you know, I did this like three or four times, so it was, uh, it was pretty alarming. I was like, wow, just for that query, it only took seven seconds. My thoughts, there's got to be some kind of caching in there. I didn't do any digging as to why, um, but that's what it is. So it's about as far as I got. I figured if you guys wanted to talk details, uh, we could talk details, or I could just shut up. And uh, thanks for letting me talk. I think I, I think I missed it. Did you guys try delta indexes? Uh, we did do delta indexes. Um, in fact, we <coughs> needed to do delta indexes um, because the as each object would change um, in Sphinx, um, <coughs> Sphinx doesn't do a do a per record index. So we did it on something that's a little bigger than 170k, but uh, we ended up doing. I think we ended up using observers to do. Use what? Sorry. Used observers to do, basically. Oh. Ghetto okay. background index. Yeah. Action. <laughs> we just, you know, in the end, I think it was. We just looked at this background indexing and went, "This is really janky. This is." really pedestrian and we want something that's a little bit more, you know, uh, less dependent on some other kind of job runner to do the indexing. So, um, you know, there's a lot of other options out there for search engines. Uh, these two happen to have, you know, Rails gems that are pretty easily adaptable and easy to set up. So, um, for what it's worth, they both have, probably have their benefits and drawbacks. Uh, that's our experience though. Do you have to do any customization to uh, the filters or whatever? We did. Um, we did change a little bit of the code, and that's one of the slides I left out because I figured, if you know, we want to talk about that in detail. What we did. One of the major things that we did was uh, we wrote a separate module for our solar searching um, that did all of the core stuff um, behind the scenes, and then just included that module into the searchable models, as opposed to in Sphinx. You know, it's a it's a simple block where you just define what you're looking for in each of those models. Um, the solar one is a little more convoluted. Um, I could show you the diffs if you're interested. So, but it was you know it was it's a pretty manageable change. Do you look at any other uh, arguments besides uh, solar and, and things like that? We, we didn't look at anything at else. Elasticsearch. No, I will tell you that the main reason we did go with solar is because we had a senior developer that was just, you know, he said, you know, we could solve these problems if we just moved to solar. And we're like, well, you know, what's the what's the time frame to do it? And, you know, we figured less while well, we were at a low code point. Elasticsearch still runs on the same. So it's mm -hmm. just a, it's I guess it's a sharded, distributed, restful interface, and everything goes back via JSON. So. So, I mean, it, it, it's interesting. It's, it's just uh, that was one of the others that came up uh, when we were we were actually just kind of reviewing some search engines. Okay. Uh, we went with Solar mainly because the one developer had a lot of experience with it. <coughs> I was like, all right, cool, do it. <laughs> right. Yeah. Yeah. So, we've been running on it for three weeks, no major incidents. So. We've had some index wonkiness and some configuration stuff, but it's been getting worked out. So. How, how big is the difference between the full index? With solar, you don't have to do a full index, but just is it like um, 10 times slower or like two times slower? To I, I don't know. I, I couldn't tell you. I was, you know, I've been told. I can give you the anecdotal answer is that's a lot slower. <laughs> that's what that means. <laughs> yeah. yeah. So, um, you know, I figure as long as we don't have to do it on every deploy, I don't really care that it's a lot slower. And we could do it at 2 in the morning if we had to do it every day. And I'll cross that bridge when we come to it. You mentioned 
can actually speed up that index by increasing the mem limit too. If there's a mem limit for actually building the index in solar during runtime in uh, space. Oh, okay. So you can actually double it. I just did that the other day. Nice. Gives you a little warning sometimes, but it doesn't do it until you're really low. So <laughs> you just boost it right at the beginning. It's a lot quicker. Cool. Kind of so, negates uh, the low memory footprint, though, doesn't it? It only does it during the index, and then you're, there's, there's two separate configs. There's actually one for indexing, and there's one for runtime. So you can actually change them to make them different. And yeah. low memory footprint, we're talking upping it from, I think it's set really low to like 4 meg to 64 or something. So yeah, and there you're talking about on the index one? Yeah. Yeah, that, that is a quick problem. But on the index, or like the more memory you can, or on the, on the search daemon, the more memory you give it, the better, obviously, because it can hold everything in RAM. It's going to be faster, but you don't have to. It's so just more of a function of how much data you have, and that makes so big of a data set. So, out of curiosity, who currently prefers Sphinx? Anyone? Still do. Yeah. Is it just you, then? I guess so. I do, too, <laughs> but I don't. I don't know what it's for. I haven't used the other thing. Yeah, it's kind of static, 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 so we don't have to rebuild data. Okay. We just have to rebuild just the data change. So uh, we're still on Ferret, and a few weeks ago, I uh, <laughs> did Spike to switch over to Solar, and uh, kind of hit a showstop where we kind of depend on partial word searches and couldn't find a good way to implement that in Solar. So it's, it's tabled. Just throwing that out there if anyone knows that with those partial word searches. Is that there's like a whole like you have to re index stemming stuff? Yeah, you have to start and build new stems for every letter in the word or something like that. Or yeah. Yeah, it gets huge. Yeah, that sounds Sphinx terrible. Does okay with multilingual. And recently was thinking Sphinx they added N grand support so you can do Chinese and Japanese language support because they're not a word. Right. What about fast cool. accounts? Because that's the con that my team gave me over the Sphinx versus Solar. They said that Sphinx didn't have an easy way to return facet counts from the data set. And yeah. it, that was built into Solar as a facet. It was a big thing for us. I don't know. Facet counts. Right, yeah. I do know that that's, so what's the name of the plugin you're using? Solar? Um, Sunspot. 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 It's really awesome. The output it gives you is just so useful. Because you already built in methods to get all kinds of that. Kind of info off your return results. That, that's all I have. Thanks, Jason. Thanks, Jason.